The Breakfast Club every Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. Electric Avenue on E883, your lifestyle station. And 27th of March, it's a Saturday. And good morning to you. And uh, this is Jay on The Breakfast Club on EFM's Mega Weekends. And once again, we are here on The Breakfast Club. And I have special, I have special guests on the show today. And we're going to talk about a very special topic, a very special discussion on the show today. And if you're listening in, please do not change the dial. Leave it at 88.3 because it's going to be an interesting chat for sure. EFM.LK from around the world, anywhere in the world. And if you have a question, of course, you can ask on 0773-336-336. Okay. So with that, let's give a big, huge E883 welcome to Maria Rayman, who is the country director of British Council, Sri Lanka and Samita Sugatimala, who is the Program Director of Foundation for Innovative Social Development, or FISD. Both of them are here in the studio to talk about a very special topic. So we're going to get into it right now without any further delay. With that, let's give a huge welcome to Maya Rayman and Samita. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Jay. Hope you're keeping well. I'm, I'm doing great and great to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for dropping by. And uh, first of all, we have an interesting topic and sometimes maybe one hour is not enough to talk about this. But uh, but we'll we'll see what we can uh, talk about all that information and, 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 and everything. But in the meantime, let's uh, let our listeners get to know you a little bit. So, Maria Rehman, you're the country director of, uh, of British Council Sri Lanka. Um, could you... Tell us a little bit about your role and, and, and I know you came to Sri Lanka recently. Yes. <laughs> yes, hi, yeah, hi, hello everyone, I hope you're having a good weekend. Um, so, um, my name is Maria, yes, and I've just joined uh, the British Council Sri Lanka team as country director. I have spent two weeks in quarantine and I've been out and about enjoying the, the wonders of uh, Colombo for the last uh, month and a half. Um, and you know, it's a, it's a pleasure and a privilege to uh, to be in this country and to be working for the British Council in such an important role. Um, uh, prior to coming to Sri Lanka, I uh, joined the British Council five years ago. I used to have a, a, a professional background in public libraries in the UK, and I joined the council five years ago when they were looking to reopen mm. libraries in Pakistan, so right. in Karachi and Lahore. I got on, the, on, a, on a plane and I traveled to Pakistan and I spent two years opening uh, libraries and a digital library actually uh, in those two cities. Um, and then I moved on to being a, a, a director for the Punjab area, right. uh, which is one of the biggest um, regions in uh, Pakistan. Mm. And, uh, you know, it was a very interesting experience for me working internationally for the first time in my life and being a, a leader and in fact the first woman leader of that office for the British Council in um, Pakistan, in the Punjab. And, um, and then from there, I was, like I said, uh, very lucky to get my position as country director of Sri Lanka. Well, that is awesome and congratulations. And uh, also, let's move on to Samita Sukuti Mala, who is the Program Director for Foundation for Innovative Social Development. Samita, good morning to you and great to have you on the show today. And uh, can you tell us a little, about, a little bit about your role? Yeah, good morning everyone. Um, I, I think uh, I have been in this field of uh, gender and development uh, for the last, uh, let's say, 17 years. Uh, and um, started my uh, journey as a kind of an activist uh, with the kind of sensitivity that women need to play a bigger role in this country mm -hmm. and that women, women deserve um, you know much better than what they are deserving at the moment yeah so um, my, uh, in my position as the uh, program director uh, I think uh, my uh, most uh, strongest area is to work with the communities right. and to work with women uh, in communities to empower them uh, to build their capacities so that they can uh, look into their own issues and kind of you know take ownership um, from their own sides that you know they find the solutions yeah so um, I, I've been enjoying this uh, journey and uh, I'm happy to be here today to discuss so as you know, the ladies mentioned that it's a very important topic just like we said. It's about the, uh, gender equality, inequality and, and how uh, British Council and of course uh, Foundation for Innovative Social Development are helping young ladies and women and, 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 and girls. So uh, if you have a question in this regard, of course you can ask. But first of all, I'd like to ask you uh, from Maria uh, is that uh, could you tell us a little bit about the role the British Council play in local communities to address some of the biggest global challenges when it comes to gender? particularly focusing on 
the younger generations. Yeah, thanks Jay. So um, I'd like to begin just by stating something that I think we'll all agree on, which is gender equality is a fundamental human right. And that's uh, something that's high on the agenda for most countries, most governments around the world, including the UK, mm. where uh, girls' education is uh, foreign secretaries, one of the foreign secretaries' top um, priorities. And of course, it's high on the agenda for a lot of international organizations. Mm. For the United Nations, for example, it's one of the 17 sustainable development goals. Um, so at the highest level, so you know, starting right at the top, it's a key priority. And, and, and again, stating the very obvious, I hope, um, uh, there's compelling evidence uh, that says um, an equal society uh, is um, you know, an equal society is a more inclusive, a more prosperous, and a more secure and sustainable society. Mm. So when we're all equal, everyone's lives get better, and not just women and girls, but um, but men and boys as well. So if women lag behind, so do we globally um, in social and economic terms as well. Right. Um, and there's lots of evidence to back that up as well. So um, unfortunately, uh, when, it, when we look at gender rights across the world, uh, we see that politically, economically, in education, in health, uh, women lag behind. Mm. And um, things are being made worse by COVID. Yeah. So the sad truth of the matter is that most of us in our lifetimes will not see gender equality. The, over a hundred years, uh, if we continue at the pace that we're at, it will take over a hundred years to achieve true gender parity. So there's a lot of work to be done. Yeah. Um, yes. And, 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 and I guess, yes, now you mentioned, you know, the Western countries, of course, they are moving forward in this subject a lot and and, and, uh, and you see a lot of people are getting involved in this but in Asian countries when we take Sri Lanka, India, Pakistan uh, uh, this is a personal question of mine do you feel like there is a disparity or are we years or ages behind or are we getting close? What's the story? Well, uh, first of all I, I don't think I agree much with that because you know South Asia had been um, a very um, equal uh, society from yeah. the historical ages yeah. but uh, with some of the western influences only that we uh, you know develop these inequalities uh, but but of course over the time uh, some people just you know uh, take the new learning understand what what is better for people uh, and if they have less a kind of traditional and cultural uh, barriers mm -hmm. that you know uh, not let them move forward they can definitely take the yeah. uh, things forward but yeah. when it comes to south asia i think we uh, we kind of at some point in the history we mixed up everything uh, and the culture yeah. and everything yeah. uh, so it it actually uh, didn't help people much to progress yeah. uh, I, I think um, when it comes to south asia uh, although uh, it's a very mixed uh, uh, region in terms of uh, how they uh, kind of you know treat uh, women, how societies look at uh, different practices related to marriage, mm. and so many other things, you know, like th there are so many traditional things that uh, hel hold women back. Mm. So we, there's a lot, lot to do in terms of that uh, for South Asia, yeah. but still I think we are moving forward. Yes, that's good. That's good. Uh, that's good to see. And uh, what are your experiences, Maria? So I know you've been here only for a short period of time, but so far as your role as country director of uh, British Council Sri Lanka, how has that experience been for you so far? Uh, well, it's a big job, and it's uh, it's been uh, very exciting, but also very challenging. Um, so I I would say that it's a uh, it's an enormous responsibility. Um, the British Council is a cultural relations organisation, which I think sometimes people don't really you know what does that mean? Uh, but it means that at the very basic level, it's our job to create friendly knowledge and understanding between the people of the UK and the rest of the world. And on Samitha's point. Um, yeah, the gender equality and inequality isn't something that's just happening in South Asia or it's worth it worse in uh, South Asia. You know, the UK, uh, countries around the world, the West are also facing similar issues around yeah. gender pay, uh, the gender pay gap, excuse me, uh, violence against women and girls. That's systemic and worldwide. It's a global problem. Global issue. Yeah. And uh, I'd love to talk about that a bit more. Um, but what the British Council does is it works with people at the institutional government level, but also so more importantly, I'd say at the grassroots levels, with pe in communities, with individuals, with uh, institutions, with civil society organisations like Samitha's, mm. um, to develop, uh, to understand, and to empower people 
to sort of find solutions for problems locally, which is the only way we think we can truly make um, uh, meaningful, sustainable change. Um, and we do that in many areas, climate, um, you know, um, economic development, but also critically women and girls as well. All right. And uh, Samita, I'll ask you this, uh, FISD. Okay, as program director, what strategies were used to engage local communities to address violence against women and girls? And uh, what were the key learnings from the project, from such a project? Yeah, um, I mean like um, FISD had been in partnership with British Council for the last, uh, I would say like five years. Mm. And uh, we have been working in collaboration with British Council to uh, empower communities to uh, prevent violence against women and girls and also to achieve gender equality. Uh, but uh, when it comes to FISD, FISD had been working in Sri Lanka uh, since 2011 and we actually uh, believe in um, empowering uh, communities uh, in a very holistic manner so that you know you not only engage women and girls because they are the kind of you know victims or the survivors of the issue mm. but also to engage more um, community-based institutions and also engaging men and boys and to uh, analyze the issues uh, with the communities because sometimes you know uh, these issues are very sensitive uh, and people always deny that they undergo violence even women mm. and violence has already always being a private issue so the, whenever you go to a community and uh, you know start working with people they will always say that no, that nothing is happening you know like we are all right women are all right and and if you ask men they will say they are well taken care of yeah. but women themselves they also deny that you know mm. since they, they think that if they uh, expose a uh, kind of you know declare that they are undergoing violence it will affect their families and children and the whole community yeah because they think about the family aspect what will that person say this exactly. person say and all exactly. that yeah. So in, in such cases, women are so vulnerable. Mm. So uh, they think that uh, they just, you know, uh, it's their fate and that nothing they can do. So we start from there that, you know, understand that we can do nothing. Yeah. So to encourage them that you can do something. Mm. First of all, to understand that you undergo this. To yeah. kind of, you know, accept that. Yeah. That is the starting point. Which is true. Uh, without just saying it is what it is, you know, <laughs> without yes. just saying that. Very true. So we're going to continue our conversation with Maria and Samita right here on The Breakfast Club with Jay on EFM's Mega Weekends. And once again, if you have a special question, of course, you can ask on 0773-336-336. And it's a very special conversation indeed, all the way till 10 a.m. until we please takes over. But in the meantime, let's take a quick break. The time is uh, 14 minutes past uh, 9 o'clock. Uh, good morning to you. And uh, we'll be right back. Right. Ooh Child is the name of that song and uh, this is Jay on The Breakfast Club on EFM's Mega Weekends and uh, good morning to you and in conversation with Maria and of course uh, Samita and Maria is the country director of British Council Sri Lanka and uh, with that let's continue our conversation with Maria off air we were talking about uh, some of the community work that British Council is doing and of course FISD um, where Samita is the program director so Maria can we touch a little bit on some of the community work that British Council is doing? Yeah, so as I uh, said before uh, the music break, um, what we do um, only works if we work uh, in the local community. Uh, we can make all the policies, all the big statements in the world, but we won't really get change until that's translated mm. um, at the community level. And I'd just like to touch on our, one of our flagship programs, uh, a program called Active Citizens that we've launched and have been running for over 10 years now across the world actually. We operate in over 100 countries around the world and active citizens is um, a method that we use to engage with uh, the communities to address um, issues like gender equality so what we do is we work and I, I will stop I will just add that our primary audience our target audience is young people the British Council is a, an organization that works to create change through and with young people so we uh, our active citizens are a pool of often students um, based in the community who are trained in the active citizens methodology. Samita will go into that a little bit more. And once they have the tools uh, to sort of, and once they're equipped with the tools to sort of deal with like 
problems that they identify in their communities, they go on and do social action projects. And the idea is that they have training in um, sort of being good citizens, basically. And then they take that to their local communities, they come up with a problem that's happening in their community, and then they find the ways to address that problem working with their community. And so we train and empower them, and then they go on to affect change at the local level. Um, I, I just to finish off by saying that um, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll stop there. No, actually, what I wanted to say was that uh, a project that uh, is very close to my heart and just to me, there's actually is uh, the Empowering Communities Addressing Violence Against Women and Girls, which use this active citizens methodology um, for over two and a half years. Um, and that journey, how we supported people to address this issue at the community level at four, in four districts in Sri Lanka is um, one of our sort of something that I'm extremely proud of. We uh, created a digital booklet. Um, on sort of the uh, the impact of it, the stories of individuals who took part, um, but I'm going to hand over to Samita to talk about it in a bit more detail. All right, Samita, would you like to elaborate on that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think. Um, um, our initial partnership with the British Council is on the Active Citizens Youth Leadership Program. Uh, so we actually, uh, before we start this uh, empowering communities to end violence against women, we have been working uh, or engaging young people uh, to undergo the Active Citizens uh, Leadership Program uh, so that they can um, uh, kind of, you know, find any problem in their own communities and start initiating dialogue and you know, do interventions that they think is better for their communities. So based on that experience and learning that we got for, for maybe like two years, we started this project in 2018, where for the first time we engaged women at the committee level. Because you know, young people, it's, I don't say that it's more easy, but young people are more active and socially engaged. But when it comes to communities and engaging women, to an active citizen youth leadership program or community empowerment program, mm. it had been quite challenging because uh, uh, active citizens uh, training program it, it's a kind of you know a lengthy uh, residential program normally, yeah. but we really had to cascade that program to uh, suit the uh, environment that we had been working with mm. because women couldn't come to a residential program, they they couldn't leave their children behind and. Uh, most of the men in the families wouldn't allow them to come to these trainings. Wow. So uh, it's a five days training program and so we had to cascade that to engage women in a more meaningful way. So because they were the people who were undergoing violence and they had the experience of how to come out of that. Uh, and uh, therefore we actually, uh, the program was very sensitive. Uh, it uh, kind of, you know, uh, divided the program into three, four different training schedules and uh, we actually transported women every day to the training. And our uh, district coordinators actually went into their families and took discussions before the training so that, you know, even the men had understanding of why they need to engage women yeah. um, to kind of overcome those challenges. So that is one of the main uh, aspect of this journey in the empowerment, in the in the model that we used. Yeah. And this active citizen methodology is quite useful when, when, as I earlier said that, people need to kind of reflect the problem upon themselves first. So the methodology always talks about uh, the self and uh, interrelationships with other people around uh, the person's life. Um, uh, it, it's called uh, me and you. And also um, its relationship with the community. Uh, we together. So that is the main methodology uh, of active citizens journey, talking about yourself, uh, talking about your relationships and then talking about your engagement with the wider community. Right. So those three areas were quite, uh, I mean, quite uh, effectively used in this project to uh, mobilize young people and women to identify problems that they had in their communities when it comes to violence against women and to design and implement uh, social action projects mm. uh, which actually um, they took the uh, ownership, they found the resources and they actually uh, enjoyed the uh, achievements. Mm. So that is, uh, in nutshell, I think that, that that had been the journey. Right. Okay. And we have a question from Dominic who says, Good morning, Jay. I would like to ask Maria a question. I think this might be applicable for both of you. Um, and I think if both of you uh, give your views on this, this um, Dominic is asking, uh, I'd like to ask whether 
whether Maria found a gender pay gap exists in Sri Lanka. So Maria came recently to Sri Lanka. So, but Samita, of course, she's Sri Lankan. She probably has an idea on this. But Maria, both. Uh, let me ask that question from both of you. Shall I uh, begin with a slightly wider perspective, yeah. and then we can focus in on Sri Lanka? So yeah. yes, I am new, so I'm not sure exactly what the specific figures for Sri Lanka are. Yeah. But I think it's worth noting that uh, in South Asia. Um, women's economic participation is relatively pretty low. I think they're less than 30% of the workforce oh, right. currently, and there's really strong evidence that backs up the 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 fact that if more women participated in the workforce, we would have more uh, faster economic growth across the region as well. So, you know, more participation, better outcomes for everyone. Um, but I'll say very quickly about the British Council itself as an organization, an international organization. Uh, in 2018, I believe, we did a gender pay gap analysis. Uh, it was a big topic in the UK, and we found a gender pay gap in our organization. And, you know, we talked about it with our colleagues, uh, you know, we're finding ways to address that. Yeah. And we understand that these things are systemic. They uh, have a historical, uh, you know, they've, they're there for reasons that are sort of historical. And we need to actively address uh, the pay gap. Uh, you know, we have fewer women in higher levels of the organization. In fact, we're an 84 year old organization. And for the first time this year, we've had a woman CEO for the British Council. So there are, you know, issues wow. even in uh, organization that prides itself on promoting gender equality um, and I'll, I'll pass over to Samita. Yeah, I mean, definitely uh, there is a gender pay gap in Sri Lanka uh, when it comes to, especially when it comes to the informal sector. Is it uh, depending on the organization or is it like a general? It's thing? a general, it's it's like country level uh, general okay. um, uh, way of, uh, you know, how, how employment is being looked upon yeah. uh, for men and women. Right. And if you take the informal sector, uh, I mean, sometimes it's very, um, how do you say, it's very subtle, you know, uh, if you take the plantation sector. Uh, you might see that uh, men and both men and women are given the same salary, but they work more. Women work more yeah, hours. Absolutely. So the gap is like you know that uh, it's quite invisible. Mm. And if you take the uh, the garment industry, there's a clear pay gap uh, and and number of uh, hours that women work long time yeah. with you know phasing and and sometimes you know it, it has to be understood in a very sensitive manner. Uh, the 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 experiences of women. I mean, if, if you are in the same job and if you are even paid the same salary, but the experiences are not same. You know, you undergo workplace harassment. You have to undergo uh, harassment in public transport when you travel. Mm. So with all these things, things are not similar for women. Um, right. You know, if I can just add, also you women go home and they have uh, uh, disproportionately more uh, care uh, responsibilities exactly. at home, domestic uh, responsibilities at home. Exactly. So there's a, a shadow unpaid uh, domestic yeah, labour yes, exactly unpaid going on. And I say COVID has just made it worse because their situation is more precarious because of the areas that they predominantly work in, the um, fields of the garment industry, for example. Um, uh, domestic work and so on, more precarious. Yeah. And uh, this is Jay on The Breakfast Club on EFM's Mega Weekends and continuing our conversation with Maria and Samita. So uh, ladies, let's jump into this uh, particular question. You, you talked about social action programs, etc. Uh, maybe uh, an example or two regarding that? So I'll begin with a, a, a social action project run by our young active citizens um, called Travel with a Smile. So this one is a really great uh, example of how you can make a change at the grassroots levels. Um, a UN report a few years back uh, noted that approximately 90% of women traveling uh, by public transport uh, experienced some form of harassment, whether it was physical, verbal, uh, emotional, uh, psychological, 90% of women traveling to work, you mentioned so the, the, yes. that as well in your example. Um, so a group of active citizens uh, decided to tackle this uh, and they did that by um, doing a public awareness campaign. Mm. They worked with bus drivers, bus conductors, at bus shelters. They did a, a theater play as well, I believe, as well as... Um, and engage with the commuters as well. And engage with the commuters 
meters as well this to is raise here. Yeah, in, in Sri Lanka. Lanka. Wow. Uh, in Colombo, I think, uh, to uh, raise awareness of the issue, to get people to speak up about it if they see it. So actually engage men as well to say, you know, call it out, um, stop it when it happens, uh, empowered women to speak up as well. And um, the project uh, culminated, I think, in a, a walk as well on International Women's Day. And together, it was such a powerful um, project that uh, I think the Ministry for Women and Child Affairs uh, took note and uh, invested money in doing things uh, along the same lines in other parts of Sri Lanka as well. So it yes. shows how young people can take action at the community level, uh, address a, a specific and prevalent pro problem in the community, and then it can kind of like have a ripple effect to other parts of the country and make a real change in, in the way we behave and think and do things. So that's a really cool one for me. Yeah, I mean, um, let, let me uh, take a few uh, examples from the project that we did itself with yeah. women and young people. Uh, it, it was quite strange, you know, like uh, when it comes to women, the most of the social action projects that women wanted to do uh, was engaging at the family level, you know, looking at the household, uh, building relationships and uh, bringing uh, more uh, family together and, you know, like having, the more, having more community engagement. Uh, to support the family uh, relationship building. But when it comes to young people, as I earlier said, the young people are more engaged at the social level. Mm. They took over a social action project, uh, uh, one on uh, ha handling cyber violence, mm. and uh, of course, uh, this uh, sexual harassment in public transport, and also uh, influencing uh, media communication. So they were more onto uh, so, uh, more social issues. Uh, but women, when it comes to women, they as a group they come together because the family is more valuable to them and they know that if violence is happening at the family level that uh, not only affect women themselves, that affect children, that affect uh, the economy of the family and also there's a lot of other uh, psychological things that are kind of in, uh, interrelated into that. Yeah. So, uh, those act social action projects also like women initially thought that it's really difficult for them to engage men and boys and uh, but later when we also like as a community when we uh, approached men and boys they actually wanted to come in and support uh, the course because they at the end of the day both men and women really wanted to have a happy family, mm. right? But we, we, for men, they didn't know that they were not contributing much towards that be because most of their happiness was going into boozing out and, you know, engaging with yeah. the peers in the uh, outside of the family. Yeah. But to bring all that into the family, um, adding all those values into the family, women just, they thought that they couldn't do it alone. Mm. So they really wanted support to come in. Right. So these social action projects actually got the support from the whole community. Mm. If community, the whole community believes in something and they kind of push that uh, forward, uh, rather than just, you know, one or two individually talking about the issue and trying to do something in the community, mm. this whole engagement as a uh, social, you know, uh, as active citizens, mm. they took a very brave uh, steps. So I think uh, they were quite uh, like happy when we brought the whole stories into online space. If you give me one more minute to talk about that, yeah, uh, we actually created this online space for women and uh, young people to bring their uh, learnings, achievements into an online social ca media campaign called Her Safe Space. I was just going to ask that about the Her Safe uh, Space campaign. What the, what's that about? Yeah, that, that was related to the uh, project okay. that we did in the communities because we didn't want the uh, learnings and all the things that is happening, nice things happening at the good practices happening at the community level to end there. We just wanted to bring it to a na wider national dialogue. Yeah. So only way that we could do that was to bring it to online space where so many people are engaged, young people are engaged and that uh, a dialogue can happen. So, uh, but we were still aware that uh, when we bring women into the women from the community into online space, uh, from one thing they will not be able to kind of you know if there is a uh, there is some cyber harassment that is happening, they will not be able to manage it, and it will be a new experience for them. So we were quite sensitive uh, to make sure that when we bring even a photo, 
you know, even a photo of a community level uh, woman, when we are taking that to the online space where we were very careful that uh, we have the food consent and the women are well aware on how to manage that if a bad comment comes and you know, bad feedback comes and also from uh, at, at a different level, we were engaging young people and taking up a discussion on responsive communication, a resp gender responsive communication, mm. where they could like kind of you know um, engage in a very productive discussion at an online space where they supported these initiatives, so that they um, kind of. Uh, take learnings from that and replicate that uh, at a different communities or different uh, space. Mm. So that is what the whole Her Safe Space is all about, you know, okay. uh, bringing the learnings and disseminating that into a wider community while taking care of the uh, safety of women and girls. Okay, and any of our uh, ladies listening in, uh, can they be a part of it as well? Is there a, is there a website or? A well, it had uh, been a Get social info. media yeah. Facebook page, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they can go into the Facebook uh, page of her space, so safe space, and see if they want to get engaged in with the conversations oh. that is happening. All right, her safe space on Facebook. Just look for it, and then you might come across it. And uh, very quickly, I'll ask this also uh, from Maria. From your experience in working in South Asia and the UK, what are your thoughts on how we as individuals can help to build a sustainable movement? to empower women and, and, and girls? That's a big question. Um, and I think we've sort of discussed uh, one of the most uh, tangible, the most powerful ways we can do it, and that's to get involved at the local level. Oh. Um, but I will say that um, that what the British Council does is, um, and I, I just want to, I don't want to make this too complicated, but just to say that, you know, we work holistically, so we want to work at the community level, and that's where we think that change is most uh, impactful. But we also work at the district level, and also the national level, so we help to connect the dots. So the work that we do on the ground, it can have an impact, you know, through uh, the previous example I gave, that goes beyond it. And, uh, you know, we have contacts, we have uh, relationships at the institutional and at the government level as well and so by linking our work to for example the national action plan for women's development in Sri Lanka we can also get buy-in from government stakeholders and get them to make policy changes that help uh, change uh, things for the better for women so it's about sort of working from the bottom up and from the top down as well so working both ways we don't want our programs just to be um, gender neutral or to be gender sensitive we also want them to be gender transformative mm. and you know that means making systemic fundamental policy changes to uh, improve in a real way the experience of women's and work towards uh, you know, systematically towards the empowerment of uh, women and gender equality. So, I mean, anything you want to add? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, when, when talking about gender transformation, yeah. uh, we definitely have to move beyond just creating awareness. Mm. I think in Sri Lanka, we have done enough awareness. People are aware. We can't say that we, I don't know. Yeah. Right? People are aware. They know, know that violence affects and it, it creates a bad impact. But still, things are happening because that as as individuals, people have not transformed their uh, understanding of uh, be being yeah. a woman or a man. Do you feel like the family background also affects here? Like, you know, the parents it saying, does. you know, don't say anything, it just does. keep quiet. You know, what will the relatives think? It does. All? No, I mean, not only family. I mean, if you, I mean, what I wanted to bring in here is that from individual level, you need to uh, move into in institutional level, right. including family, mm. family, school. Uh, you know, like community-based organizations, right. the government institutions uh, at uh, district and national levels. Okay. So if institutional policies and systems does not change, right. and if we do not change the way that we teach our children from the household to the institution level, like, you know, in schools, in, if you take the curriculums, they are very, uh, you know, insensitive in terms of gender. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, so much of uh, advocacy is needed at national level. Yeah. Um, so definitely, uh, this change is, uh, we need to address it a bit of a higher level now. Yeah. Okay, so the conversation continues. The final few minutes of the show, if you have a question, of course, ask. Uh, you can ask 077-336-336. But in the meantime, let's take a quick break. Time is 9.45. This is Jay on The Breakfast Club on EFM's Mega Weekends. Good morning. Good morning.
final few minutes of the Breakfast Club with Jay and then Rick Dees takes over and he's going to jam some uh, super duper music right here on E88.3, your lifestyle station. So keep it right here uh, to the show. But in the meantime, we have to talk about uh, this because we have this particular uh, conversation that we are going ahead with, which is, uh, of course, having a conversation with Maria Rehman and Samida. Maria is the country director of, uh, of uh, British Council Sri Lanka and uh, Samida is the program director of FISD. So uh, now we've talked about you know, some of the big projects, etc., and things that have been happening. Uh, so what's the next step? What's, uh, what's the next uh, set of goals, actually? So I'll uh, begin just by saying that we uh, closed the violent, you know, the empowering communities uh, through addressing violence against women and girls project late last year. But actually, in the spirit of true transformation, uh, there were parts of that project that we thought needed further investment to take forward. So um, we um, we gave a grant actually to Samita and her uh, foundation to, to sort of continue the work that you did um, uh, in new districts and also approach it in new ways as well, especially looking in the area of digital um, violence uh, against women and girls as well in the digital realm, which is growing uh, cyberbullying and harassment and so on. Um, so there, there's that. So we're continuing our work in this really powerful area. We also um, will add that we've just recently invested in a, a women's participation and leadership workshop. So uh -huh. we've taken a hundred women leaders and activists in South Asia, including 25 in Sri Lanka, and we've developed in uh, we've invested in their development as leaders. Um, through the CLAW leadership uh, project and this is just so that again contributing at a you know at a at scale in women's ability to uh, participate politically socially culturally and uh, be the change to be the change that we want to see in the world and of course uh, some of the work that we do in uh, sustainable uh, economies creative economies um, is about um, empowering women to find ways to increase their, to improve their livelihoods, uh, to have more participation in the workforce, to find ways that sort of are, um, you know, sympathetic to their lifestyle and their, uh, the, the very real barriers that they find that they face at home and in, in society, but overcoming those, uh, drew, um, you know, and improving their livelihoods. So there's lots of different things that we are doing going forward, and you can find out more about what we're doing if you want to uh, by. Uh, finding us on Facebook, following us on Twitter, uh, checking us out on uh, Instagram, uh, and so on. I'll hand over to Samita now. Yeah, I think, um, uh, you know, when, whenever you um, uh, finish as a project, it's not always uh, that you bring uh, good practices or uh, the good achievements, but there's a lot of learnings coming from that. And there's a lot of gaps that have been identified. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to, I mean, like, as Maria at the beginning said, uh, to kind of achieve gender equality, it, it might take 100 years. Uh, and same in the communities, you know, there are so, so many um, established gender norms that you can't uh, handle uh, within a shorter period. And you need a lot of processing and engagement yeah. at the community level and also at the household level, at the family level. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, I mean, it's quite strange sometimes, you know, when you have been working with uh, empowering women, but still when you go back to back and talk to them, to see that they have been like learning more things that, you know, that uh, lead to inequality, inequality. Yeah. So those norms, for example, like um, you get uh, kind of, you know, you, uh, you will face violence if you dress in a very you know inappropriate yeah. way mm. in terms of how people kind of define it mm. so women also tend to believe in that and always uh, things that uh, you know relate things to uh, that is uh, like uh, to coming from outside yeah. uh, to give justification of why violence is happening yeah. and and that sometimes women might be feeling just you know comfortable saying that you know it's not us it, it's just you know how things are you know exactly it, so so that is one thing that there are still so many strong gender norms that you need to address and the other thing is uh, women uh, when they are really aware uh, they report and they come out with their problems and then as comes the question what to do with those things yeah how do you handle those things and can women handle it themselves right so we definitely understand that we need to connect them 
with the services with service providers at the district and the division level and if not at the national level mm -hmm. but when it comes to service provision we do we know that in sri lanka there are a lot of gaps in terms of the resources in terms of uh, the attitudes and the uh, thinking uh, the base of thinking uh, by the resource persons or the service providers so there are so many gaps that we need to address uh, and the other thing is that we know that violence is uh, when it comes to like you can empower the communities but violence is happening at other different spaces yeah uh, people are not just you know living in communities now they are connected digitally yeah. you know uh, they are online uh, so those things needs to kind of be addressed at different levels so the future without violence um, the way forward that we have taken a new pathway called a future without violence where we work with young people mm -hmm. to uh, address uh, cyber violence and uh, also tackle the gender norms that happens um, um, mostly at the community level at the family level and also in general at the country level so those uh, steps we will be taking uh, this year and the next year forward right. Uh, engaging more active citizens and getting them involved uh, to initiate their own projects. All right, brilliant. Got Subhashini who says, "Good job, ladies, and good job, Jay. Thank you so much, Subhashini. Somebody who always uh, Subhashini is somebody that always listens to the Breakfast Club and never misses it. So I had a feeling you're listening in. Uh, thank you so much, Subhashini, uh, for your message. So final minute or one and a half minutes. Uh, any final messages for the ladies listening in, and maybe even the gentlemen listening in any final words um well i just uh, say thank you jay for having us it's been fun i really enjoyed the music and oh, you. um uh, you know this is a really heavy topic perhaps for a saturday morning but it's a really important one and uh, i hope what we've uh, talked about sort of shows that you know this isn't something that happens at the highest level you know it's not something that we talk about at government levels and with ministers and so on this is something that anyone can get involved in and that's how the most meaningful sustainable powerful change happens when individuals get involved with their communities yeah Samita? Well, um, I will just uh, take a break from all the project talks okay. and I will kind of um, do a bit of a hard talk with women and girls. Okay. Uh, my last message, you know, um, women uh, need to understand their value and if they don't self-value, um, it's always leading them to a very vulnerable position mm. and that makes them more and more weak. So, but my message to young girls and women is to take care of themselves. Self-care is so important when it comes to ending violence. Because you know, you, you just leave yourself out. You just don't care about yourself. You feel guilty that you are the problem. You know, when, when things happen, you think I have not dressed properly. I mean, I have not talked properly. I have not responded properly. This is all my fault and this is all women's fault so yeah. there will be so many talks like that but i think what, what empowerment means to me is that i am able to take care of myself right. so self-care is so important and it's a skill so i think uh, women need to develop that skill all right brilliant well thank you so much once again maria and samita for taking a few moments from your busy schedule to come and have a chat with us i had fun and i think i learned a lot as well and good luck to you and your team for the future projects and everything that you're doing and yes like maria said don't forget to uh look for them on instagram twitter facebook and uh, check out some of the projects that they'll be doing thank you ladies Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much. Bye. Uh, all right, we're going to step out of the studio and you're going to enjoy some music right now with uh, Rick Dees on E883. So have yourself a great weekend. I'll catch you on Monday. Bye. The Breakfast Club, every Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m.